What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Monday, January 29th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, energy bills set to store or soar as report finds almost all major studies on net zero grossly under estimate cost next up new california bill would equip cars with technology that monitors drivers physically stopping them from speeding yikes it's, it's not a joke people next up on the menu um this goes right along with the theme for the day gas addicted europe trades one energy risk for another and trust us the u.s is not reliable this is uh the lng cancelization that we we heard about on friday and then finally u.s sanctions strands 10 million barrels of Russian crude for weeks. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in oil and gas finance. Uh, we did get rig counts on Friday, and we saw oil settle at the highest um, in nearly eight uh, eight weeks. So absolutely strong um, news there. And then we will let you guys get out of here and start your day. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to start? Hey, let's start with our buddies over there on the energy bills set to soar as report finds almost all major studies on net zero grossly underestimate cost. Michael, this is a really, really interesting story, and it is by the Royal Society is a direct quote in here. This is out of the UK. The Royal Society, for example, assumes that the cost almost everything will have and efficiency will soar. It's not that impossible, but imprudent. Let me read you some of the numbers. Yeah, I'm just going to read these bullet points, Michael. The assumptions, 60% reduction in offshore wind capital costs, 70% reduction in offshore wind operating costs, 50% increase in offshore wind output, 30% in reduction in solar CapEx, 70% in solar OpEx, 90% reduction in electrolyzer CapEx, 45% in electrolyzer efficiency, 60% in repr uh, reciprocating engine CapEx, 55% in reciprocating engine efficiency. This is bull hockey i mean i the the whole royal society was they inhaled on this report i've got the link in here for everybody to download the report my uh, what i really want to know is did the did the iea come up with these assumptions because these assumptions are out of nowhere i mean you're talking about oh it's going to be the assumptions are basically cheaper to build cheaper to operate more electricity output. I mean, in what world does that happen? Yes, technology gets bigger. Over time, we do bring down the cost of things. But we're not even, you're talking about, this isn't even talking about inflation. I mean, you think about the world we're in right now, it actually is getting more expensive to drill and expensive to outlay all of this capital and, stuff. And we've had billions lost in dollars. I mean, Siemens has lost several billion and there are wind farms that are not being bid on right now. The uh, U.S. government went out and put the stuff on the East Coast and nobody bid on any of it. You can't make any money now on <laughs> offshore wind. Anyway, no, I, well, really I mean, offshore wind is probably holding up the best under the circumstances. Solar is what's really getting crushed. Solar, I'm gonna I am gonna disagree with you, my young Padawan. And that is solar has a little bit more legs because it does not have the moving parts. Okay. Wind uh actually eight years is a number, and I mean eight years. You gotta walk away from these things in eight years. Yeah, that I'm talking is, about offshore wind. I'm with I, you I'm on onshore wind. wind. I'm talking offshore wind is now I'm my numbers are now coming in lower than eight. Anybody that says they're going to last 30 years. <laughs> As Stu would say, check the models. What's next? What's going on in our favorite state? New California bill would equip cars with technology that monitors drivers physically stopping them from speeding. <laughs> this is worse than my wife. I hate driving with my wife. 
you're going five miles more than that. No, this is a wife right over your back shoulders. Senator, California Senator Scott Weiner, he said Weiner, uh, introduced a bill that would mandate the installation of speed limiting on all vehicles. This is hilarious. Quote, unquote, there's no reason why people should retun- re- routinely be allowed to drive more than 10 miles per hour. <laughs> Wiener, he said Wiener, told the Lo- Los Angeles Times, you can want whatever you want, but that doesn't mean you're allowed to do it. Well, what about printing money? If the Fed can print money in the government, why am I paying taxes? I think it goes back to, first off, just inside baseball, folks. I tried to shoot this segment twice so we could avoid that stupid Scott Wiener joke. But we we went ahead and slipped it in there anyway. So, okay, that's fine. So take two here. Here's what I think. This goes back to Big Brother. You know, how involved do you want the government to be in your day-to-day decisions? Yes, it's illegal to go over the speed limit. But as we always talk about, the slippery, the slippery slope. Going back to what they did with the Patriot Act. What was the Patriot Act designed to do? Find, quote unquote, terrorists. But what did it do? Collect mass surveillance on Americans for who knows what they used it for. We'll never know what they used our data for. Guess what? They used it with CVS and they have been collecting all of your prescription drug yes. information. My, That's my exactly is, what they did. It's 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 never what's on the face. Second order thinking here. We talk a lot about this on the show. This is not about they don't want you to go more than 10 miles an hour. This is look at the hand over here. And but really now what we do is access to all of your data, all of your cars. And guess what? Now, as you said a couple weeks ago on the show, we're just going to drive you straight to the to the police station and just throw you in jail. <laughs> Dude, they're going to walk the cars. They're yep. going to turn the heat on, play rap, and then throw you in jail. <laughs> Let's go to the next one, Michael. And I won't do that uh, joke again. Um, but We'll get this one on the second try, hopefully. <laughs> second or third try. <laughs> Gas-addicted Europe trades one energy risk for another. The U.S. is not reliable. Michael, I would not do business with the U.S. I would not rely on the U.S. We are worthless. Um, Friday, the Biden administration got in a war with Governor Abbott. He went out, and this started out the other day. uh, Thursday, I believe it was, he put a delay on a very large... um, uh, um lng thing going on well he hauled well this is key what did he do on friday he halted lng exports and yep. it is- well new lng exports until they can determine some new epa regulations again this is it, it's it's pretty crazy existing lng facilities are good but new permits for new facilities specifically that What's crazy is we we just saw a Chesapeake Southwestern merger. What was the big selling point of that merger? Massive new LNG export capacity. Oh, it would have been nice to know that four weeks ago before that merger took place. Woohoo! I'll tell you what's absolutely um, disgusting. The world is relying on our global gas uh, on Energy Newsbeat. I now have the Global Energy Monitor. You have to kind of take a look at this with a grain of salt. Natural gas has 4,018 projects going on. Let me get rid of the pipelines. There are now 1,251 LNG exports and terminals going on. Let's get rid of the terminals. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell you operating and under construction there are 206 Mm -hmm. under construction. There are 43 LNG export terminals under construction. Let's go under imports. Under construction, there are 64 LNG imports under construction around the world. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. They need this natural, this LNG. 
The only reason we are able to, it is the largest export that we're having. If you owe $34 trillion on your debt, you got to have some exports. This man is breaking the economy, ruining us as a partner. Here's a quote out of it. U.S. LNG continues to be the cornerstone of Europe's supply and diversification strategy, said Leslie uh, Palti Gunsman, head of research and marketing at Cinmax. The Biden decision sends a real message regarding solidarity and the reliability of its supply in medium to long term. This is partially crucial at a pro uh, particularly crucial juncture where supplies from Russia and other shipshers can be mired in unpredictability. This goes along with one of our other, the next story here, Michael. Russia is the winner out of this. Yeah. Qatar up, is the Bruce, Russian. If you don't mind pulling up that second image from this article. U.S. LNG is increasingly replacing gas from Russia. Look at that share of gas supplies that are from the EU that are coming from the United States. It's absolutely spiked. We looked where that black bar down there absolutely spiked. And Russia has contracted almost threefold since quarter one, 2021. On a on this article, Michael, I'm going to embed the video of the, all the graphs and all the charts that I did in preparation for this article. Yep. People will be able to see everything I just said, and it's in the video in this article. So that'll be up here in the show notes. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, what do we got next here? Along the same lines, and the great Irina Slav has always said, sanctions don't work as intended. This article is titled, Sanctions Strand 10 Million Barrels of Russian Crude for Weeks. The Biden administration is absolutely horrific. The 10 million bar barrels carried by 14 tankers are of the skull variety out of uh, Salkin 1 and remain unsold due to Western sanctions. That amount represents 45 days of Salkin 1 production at its average rate of 220,000 barrels per day. This is going to go to the dark fleet very quickly, and it's going to go out, and Russia's still going to make money on it. This is going to sit here for a little while, but it again spreads the hatred for the United States. Uh, the, listen to this one. The Kiev School of Economics uh, estimated in December that it would bring $178 billion from oil sales in 2023. Russia is doing quite well, by the way. Yeah. And if anyone's going to be pretty, if if anyone's going to be believable on what Russia is going to do, I'm going to trust the Kiev School of Economics. They're, they're right there in the source. If anyone's got more info than them, I'd be hard pressed to find it. Well, Again, not to beat the dead horse, sanctions don't work. And it's well. proven that if you only think first order effects on right. sanctions, they don't work. Who's calling? Uh, Putin. Uh, hang on a sec. Oh I, yeah. No. Uh, hey, I, my, my theories are correct and no, uh, they are validated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Putin. See ya. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Putin. Mr. Putin, President Putin, whatever. Czar Putin. <laughs> Best BFFs. <laughs> no, heck no. I don't want the uh, CIA after my carcass. Here you go, dude. Off to you. They're already there. All right, well, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here. We'll go ahead and, like I said, pay the bills here real quick. As always, guys, the news and analysis you just hear um, is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com. Go ahead and click the link below for all the descriptions to the timestamps and news articles in this show. Stu and the team do an absolutely tremendous job keeping this website up to speed with everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes through the energy business. Check out our Deal Spotlight, um, available at Deal Spotlight. Spotlight um, on Energy Newsbeat. Just search for it. Go ahead and search for dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, our data news combo product. Really pushing that hard this quarter. We appreciate all the feedback from that. But let's go ahead and dive into finance, guys. Friday, we had we, we, I mean, markets were fairly flat. We saw the S&P 500 only up, only down about a tenth of a percentage point. NASDAQ down about five tenths of a percentage point. U.S. yields 
both a 30 down a quarter of a percentage point. U.S. 10-year yields actually up about a half a percentage point. Uh, dollar index stays fairly flat, only down about 0.01 percentage points. Um, we did see Bitcoin rise slightly, even though it ended the day down. It rose on the week 41, 7, 000, uh, 700, so sitting pretty on Bitcoin there. Uh, crude oil is where we saw probably our biggest moves relative to um um, the day we were up about three three percentage points. Seventy eight oh one is where it it finished. We looked to trade up at about seventy eight twenty three when the markets open here a little later this afternoon. Brent oil above eighty three dollars eighty three fifty nine. I mean, and really, Stu, what drove that? Um, uh, eight week high was mainly off a few things. One, we, we've got continued attacks on oil tankers in the Red Sea. I, I read that Trafigura um, oil shipping was was the latest captive uh, of this Houthi attack. Um, but I think really where a lot of this positive news come from was there was some economic data from the United States, specifically inflation um, and unemployment that, that 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 are keen to show sort of faster than expected growth. We did see China come out and, and, and boost another round of stimulus. I mean, we know how that works out in the long run. Stimulus never work, but in the short run, it works. I mean, that's the argument for stimulus is that in the short three to six month window, it can work. We've seen that with the stock market. We saw that early on, you know, uh, you know, through the from the Obama administration into the Trump administration. Both of those guys understood if we can keep interest rates low, if we can keep the money flowing, we can keep the economy. And when I mean the economy, the S&P 500 propped up because the S&P 500 is the majority of the liquid wealth in America right now. You're talking about pensions. You're talking about um, retirement accounts. If, if anyone has a retirement account outside, you know, 401k, that 401k is tied most likely to the S&P 500, maybe more. So when, when you talk about trying to keep this train going, you know, the more stimulus you can have, the better. And I think a lot of the Chinese demand numbers have been soured recently. So this new round of stimulus hopefully can continue to can, um, continues to drive demand. And that's partly why what we're seeing um, with oil prices, we did see natural gas spike $2.71. That's about 6% up from the day, mainly off the back of some colder than predicted weather as we roll into the first week of February. The only other thing we saw on Friday was rig counts. U.S. adds one rig week over week, 621. That's up again, just one from last week, 620. Canada saw an increase of seven rigs, 230. And international we saw a drop week over week of about 23 rigs at 955. A busy, busy week, Stu. We got a lot coming up here. Super excited for some of the stuff we've got. But what should people be worried about this week? Oh, I'll tell you, it's going to be uh, entertaining. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to the truckers and farmers uh, that are going on around the world and protesting the over controls. Uh, yep. They heard that uh, they were going to get controls on their tractors so they couldn't uh you know protest but if you are a trucker get a veriday bag uh so that the they will not track you because uh they may be jailing everybody on that big convoy going uh through texas so uh it's just like january 6th do you want to sit in a jail yeah or j <laughs> now we're talking january 6th great no, um no. Guy, yeah, dude, I, all I'm saying is they attacked everybody that, yeah, I know, January 6th, and they- We'll let this one go on the first cut. All right. I'm <laughs> just giving you a hard time. Um, no, well, we appreciate it, guys. We're super excited for NAPE coming up. That's February yes. 7th through the 9th. Be really excited. We got a lot of live podcasts there. Rumor has it we've got a big guest, George P. Bush. I think we can announce that. Is that uh, official? RT does, yes. And so we're going to be able to talk with him. I think David Blackman's going to be talking with him. That'll be awesome. If you're in town, check us out. We'll be at booth 1957. And uh, it's just going to be a great time. Yeah. We got Steve Reese. We got uh, Jay Young in there. We got Brett Bennett from Black Mountain. Oh, love. I, I can't wait. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. We also have several other executives from uh, uh, Reese Consulting. We have... Uh, Sharon Muntz, she is the CEO of the AI uh, thing. We have uh, several others that are. She's the CEO of AI, so watch out, guys. Be careful. Well, She'll get you. NCN Technology. If you want to implement AI, hers is the firm. She yeah. handles the big dogs around. Uh, 
Absolutely. We, we love good. We love sharing over at NCN. But with that, guys, we're super excited. We'll let you get out of here. Start your Monday. You got a great week, guys. I know you probably got some meetings you don't want to attend. Spare yourself. Listen to the show. You'll make it through, and you'll survive. And we'll see you on Tuesday, guys. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow.